three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. Oh, oh. lucky you. $16.5 million in each of your bank accounts five weeks from now. That's a lot. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. I saw it last night and really, really enjoyed it. First of all, I kind of want to know, uh, how did you get those Met Gala scenes done so well because at they, night. Come across, yeah, <laughs> they come across as so real. Was, was there any real footage used at all? Or oh, was it completely Anna Winter confirmed? had a big hand in it. And yeah, also, she, yeah, she's really involved. The, the, the Met Ball in general is like a cattle being packed into a fabulously dressed people and you're so tightly packed that you don't get to see. Glamour cattle. Yeah, glamour. <laughs> it's basically what we are, glamour. Yeah. And it was, she had, a, she had a big hand in it. It's also yeah. in the way that they allowed air to happen and you just sort of got to sit back and feel the, the, the hugeness of it. But she was, I mean, she was involved in the design of it. It was obviously, because the Met Ball is her baby, mm -hmm. you know, and she was, you know, saying to Sarah Edwards, the amazing, our amazing costume designer, what everyone should wear. Mindy and I were in the kitchen. I was a little disappointed when I got to that point in the movie. I went, okay, I'm in the kitchen wearing the chef's outfit. Oh. Did you make that voice? I did. You did? In my head. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That sounds like that. You'd never think it. Yeah. Since the movie was released uh, on the weekend in, over in the U.S., some fans kind of sensed a... Um, uh, some chemistry between your characters. Potentially, there was a romantic past. Was that intended, or is that something that the viewers it's have just, just picked that up? We have such we good just, chemistry, and we're so sexual as as, as, as beings, beings that we just you know. And why is it we go to that voice? I don't know. Because that's sexy. Not at all. Oh, okay, it's not sexy. Apparently, it's, you know, no. Steve Daniel doesn't find me sexy. <laughs> you don't find me sexy. Not with. No, <laughs> no. There's a lot of backstory, yeah. and and a lot of that didn't make it into the, the the film. You know, there's a lot of heist stuff that had to be gotten through. But it was great to know that. You know, because you've got a. We were playing old friends. Debbie's been inside for a long time, and inside you know, jail. Inside, not inside <laughs> me. You just. Yeah, I didn't even go there. You brought I'm it down to that level. Oh. We're going to break up. Yeah, we've broken up. It's it. It's over. Done. If there was a sequel, would you like the idea of that relationship being explored? If it helped, if it was. Done, if it was right for the plot, if it was something organic. Depends on what you're wearing. Really? You're going to judge me by my clothes? Totally. Wow. I'm shallow. It yeah. feels like Ocean's 8 already has a big gay following. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think it is about an all-female character? There are gay strong... people who go to the cinema? <laughs> why get out of so, town! Why do you get so loud? <laughs> because I'm Australian. It's wide open spaces. No, nope. it's because mm -hmm. no, I'm deaf. I was no, say, what, does it really? That's great. Yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of people on Twitter. Love from it. The, uh, gay I love it. And that's you know, people have asked us who would you like you know, is the next person for Ocean's Nine, and we're like the nice thing about our inclusivity and the diversity that already already exists is that all different the, types of women, all different types of transgender. I, I think you know, it's 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 a different time. And guess what? We'd like to see movies that reflect what's real mm. and what exists and what our world looks like. I could see someone like Laverne Cox joining Absolutely. the team quite easily. Yes, She's man. pretty fabulous. Okay, everybody, let's get started. Here we go. Counting down. Three, two, one. Keep on. It feels like Ocean's Eight is part of a movement in Hollywood to have all-female cast and better mm -hmm. representation for LGBTQ and more you know racial what? diversity. Not, I mean, the Bridesmaids mm. had the same thing. They, they had a, they There's like such a thing as the golden age of Hollywood that people constantly refer to, where, where women were not only producers, but they were at the center yeah. of the narrative. That was in the some 30s. Of the, some of the, yeah, some of the, the, the greatest films ever made were in that time that we keep referring to as the golden age. Mm -hmm. And somehow we've lost a lot of ground and the conversation has got a little bit dull. You know, women have okay. always been in the film industry. I think maybe they haven't had access yeah, to as big a budget. Yeah, but we haven't had... Or they the, haven't had... The studio hasn't had their back. I think the invention of the action film sort of took us out of the running for a while. Well, because it, 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 it had to be in heels? Well, you no, can't because, run because the only thing... The only reason for women in action films was is the wife or is the girlfriend or is the daughter and, and because that's what was drawing in the, the box office. I think now, hopefully, it, as you said, in the 30s, Women were producing and directing, had their own studios, basically. Mm. And I think hopefully, we just want something in the middle. We want mm. it to be inclusive. We all want to be able to sit at the table. It's not with an each either other. or situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I was going to ask, I mean, how do you ensure that this just isn't bo 
box ticking by a studio and instead it becomes the fibre of Hollywood going forward. It would be nice, wouldn't it? There's so much in development and I think women, um, you know, and, and people of different races and sexual persuasions are no longer sort of sitting back waiting for that change to happen. Mm -hmm. They're they're agents of that change. Yeah. And it's it's much it's a much more creative place to be for men, for women, for everybody, you know, if, if all of those voices are being heard. It's when every five years people say, God, things have got a bit stale. It's because the same old white men um, are green lighting the same old white gray men pictures and you know and this is not one of those this is kind of much funkier and kind of wittier and sexier and fresh I think than, than that sort of type of filmmaking yeah, no, it's, I think I think the streaming world has really influenced um, the or is, yeah. is representing what our world looks like and what we want to see and I think it's influencing cinema I mean the theaters in order for something to work people have to go see it what are we making that people want to see and leave their house and you know get a sitter or take off from work or what what is it that really excites people and gives them sort of a, a place to escape? Yeah, it's an event. Yeah.